Hello everyone, it's so great to be able to do art with you today. My name is Miss Alicia and I'm excited that we get to do some creative, fun activities today. So let's get started. Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you're doing well. This is Miss Alicia here with another art lesson. And I picked a really colorful book for us today that goes with our art lesson. And I picked it for a few different reasons. Number one, I really like the artwork in this book. I love the colors that the author and artist uses. I love the um, fact that it helps you to practice your numbers. And I also like that the animals in the book have a feeling of texture. Do you remember that word texture? We've talked about it before. Texture is how something feels or look like it feels in a picture or painting. And so in these drawings, the patterns work together to create the feeling of feathers and other things that we would see around these types of animals, which are chickens. And I'm sure you probably already knew that because you're so smart. So the title of our story today is called Big Fat Hen. This is an old, um, not necessarily story, but kind of a rhyme that we say to help us with our counting. And it's kind of fun to say. And the book shows the different hens and eggs that go with the numbers in the rhyme. Okay, so we are going to go through this story called Big Fat Hen. And we're going to look at the artwork and we're going to also practice our counting. I want you to notice the bright colors and patterns that the artist uses in the illustrations and how they work together to give the um, great feeling of texture. Okay, so let's take a look at our book called Big Fat Hen. Okay. have a bottle there. I'm just moving to the side. Okay, so Big Fat Hen. This was illustrated by Keith Baker. Do you remember that the illustrations are the pictures in the book? So how many hens do we see on this first page? Can you count them? Just one. Very good. Just one hen and the hen is looking down at this beautiful feather that's on the ground. Big fat hen. All right, one, two. One, two, all right. Look at the hen looking at that dragonfly. And my lights may make the book uh, pictures a little shiny, so I'll move them a little bit so that you can see them. There we go. So, one, two, buckle my shoe. Did you hear the word shoe rhyme with the word two? So here's a shoe and then two little chickadees. Three, four, shut the door, so look. One, two, three, four little chickadees are shutting the door. Okay. All right. Five, six. Look at these beautiful colors. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pick up sticks. So do you notice is as we go through the numbers and the rhyming words that the eggs are hatched and all of the little chicks are out of the eggs and now they're picking up sticks. Can you see those beautiful illustrations? All right. Six. 
seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lay them straight. So they picked up the sticks and then they laid them out straight. So again, we have eight little chickadees who are now straightening up the sticks. Can you see the texture? Nine, ten. Oh, look at the pretty butterflies and the pretty colors on the feathers. Let's count the eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> A big fat hen. Wow. So the word hen rhymes with the word ten. Look at this beautiful mama chicken with all of her little babies. They've all hatched and come out the shell. And then look at the patterns and the feathers and the texture. Look at the hay that the chicken is on. The artist did a great job with these beautiful drawings. <gasps> wow. And it says, and her friends. So the mama hen has friends. Let's count the um, friends of the mama hen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, she has six friends. And they all have beautiful patterns. Can you see the beautiful colors and patterns that make the beautiful texture? So lovely. All right, let's keep going. One, two, three. Four, five, six. <gasps> all their eggs, look, all of the mama hens laid all of the little babies and all their chicks. Oh, there's so many. If we counted them all, I bet there would be over 20. Okay. So that was our story. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. And then all of her friends. All right. So we're going to use this story, the beautiful illustrations in this story, to be a part of our art lesson and as inspiration for our art lesson. Before we look at that or get into our art lesson, I wanted to ask you, how many of you have ever gone to a farm? Raise your hand if you've gone to a farm. Okay. Have any of you ever seen a chicken, a real life chicken in person? Did the chicken have a lot of feathers? Yes, I bet they did. All right. So let's get into our story, or our art rather, inspired by a story, Big Fat Hen. Okay, so our art today is by a very famous artist who has painted thousands of paintings and is known all around the world. And I chose this particular artist um, number one, because he has such a variety of style that's shown in his artwork, and he's very famous. And he's also created some really interesting art that relates to our story. So our artist today is named Pablo Picasso. Can you say Pablo Picasso? Very good. All right, so I have two different pieces of artwork 
by Pablo Picasso. One picture is of a rooster. A rooster is also a chicken, but it is a male chicken. The chicken in our story was a hen, which is a female chicken. So these two pieces of art are very different, even though the same artist made them. And I wanted to show how you can create all types of art in all types of colors and techniques and different materials and create interesting pictures. Look at the rooster. It's kind of abstract. We know it's a rooster, but the face doesn't look as realistic. But look at the colors that the artist used, like blue and purple and orange and red and green. And the artist is able to put these colors together and lines in a way that create texture. Now, this picture right here is black and white, and it's a picture of a hen. This is what we call a print. The artist used a printmaking technique to do this particular work or picture of a hen. So can you see the hen? And then let's get a little bit close, closer for the rooster. Can you see that? They look very different, but they do have some of the same details like their feet. Both animals have similar feet and they both have a beak. See that? But this one is filled with color and this one is filled with black, white, and grays. So the artist used two different color combinations to create pictures of chickens. And if you see, the paper is turned in two different directions. This is what we call a portrait format because of the way the chicken is painted on the canvas. And this is what we call a landscape format because the paper is turned to the side, just like this sheet of paper that we're looking at is turned. This is called a landscape format. So I'm going to bring the book back just quickly so you can see, let me turn it the right way here, how this rooster has texture in it, just like this illustration of this hen. This black and white hen also has texture as well, just like the story, okay? So we're gonna create a picture of a chicken today, and we're gonna use different lines and colors to add texture. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our colorful picture of a hen or a chicken. So the first thing that we're going to do after you get your piece of paper is we're gonna do some drawing. So we're gonna be using the oil pastels first to do our drawing. Then we're gonna go back in and use a little bit of paint to add more color. So I have a black oil pastel. If you don't have black, you can use a dark purple or a dark blue. So either one will work. Okay, so either one of these dark colors will work to do this. We just need to draw some dark guidelines. Okay, all right, so follow me step by step. So we're going to practice with drawing our lines today. And we're going to draw some lines that curve. Okay, it's almost like you're drawing a circle or the letter O. We're going to do a lot of those type of lines and then we'll do a few straight lines or lines that curve just a little bit at the bottom, okay? All right, so let's start up here, right here. We are going to draw a line that curves. It goes down like that, and then it goes over, and then it goes over just like that three times, okay? Good job. So we have a line that goes just like that like you're making a smiley face, but the smiles are all connected. Okay, very good. All right, then we're gonna draw some lines that are almost straight. They come down like that. We're gonna draw one, two, three, and 
four. And we'll stop right there. You see how these lines come down towards the bottom of the page? If you want to draw one more, you can do that too. So it's like we just gave the chicken a necklace. Think of it like a necklace. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some more curved lines. We're going to connect them with curved lines. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So we're using the illustrations from the book kind of as our inspiration. We're going to make our own unique changes. Okay. All right. So we're going to draw a line right here that goes from here to here. And it's another curvy or bumpy line. It just goes on the side. Very good. Then we're going to draw over here. We're going to draw some feathers. Okay. And they're going to be very simple. Because we are going to draw a line that curves like that. Then we're going to draw another one. And then we're going to draw another one, just like that. Very good. And we're going to draw a line that comes down. And another line to meet it. Just like that. Then another line to meet it. And another line to meet it. So those are our feathers on the side. And then we're going to draw some feathers in the back. Let's see. Let's draw another bumpy or curved line that goes in the back, just like that. Then we're going to draw some lines that go straight to the back, just like that. Okay. Now let's go back up to the front and work on the head a little bit. We're going to take a line and draw almost like we're drawing a circle. Just going to draw a curved line just like this. And then we're going to draw another line that goes down to here. Okay. Then I'm going to draw a little line here and then a line that goes just like that. All right. So if your chicken looks different from mine, that's perfectly fine. That's the fun thing about art. We make it unique. Okay. So we're going to use this dark color oil pastel just a little bit more to add a few more details. Then we're going to get into using some of our color pastels. Okay. So watch this. I'm going to draw an extra little curved line out this way, just like that. And then I'm going to draw three lines that go up towards the corner. One, two, and three, just like that. See that? Then we're just going to connect them with a curved line like that and a curved line like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to take our black oil pastel or dark oil pastel. Wait, I forgot one more thing I do want to do. Our eyes should be dry. Okay. It should be in place now. So we're going to just draw a circle. We're just going to draw a circle. Uh oh, mine is moving. So I'm going to hold it. Draw a circle around the eye. There we go. Okay. We need to let it dry a little bit, but let it dry a little bit more and then draw a circle around the eye. So it's not moving. I need to let it dry, but that's okay. I got my circle around it. So if yours is moving, let the eye dry in place first, and then you can draw a circle around it, or you can leave it as it is. You don't have to draw a circle unless you want to. Now we're going to pick some of our favorite colors. I want you to pick whatever your favorite colors are, and we're going to draw some details on the feathers. Okay. So I'm going to use, Hmm. I think I'm going to use the color orange, this yellow orange color. You see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some of those 
curve lines like this. See that? Then I'm going to draw some more. I want you to draw whatever kind of lines you want to draw with those colors. Okay? You can draw lines like the ones I'm drawing if you want to, or you can draw some other types of lines. Draw whatever kind of lines you want to draw. Okay? So I'm going to fill mine up with these lines that are curving upwards like a smile like we've been using throughout this drawing. See how I filled that up? So whatever color you're using, you can make, I want you to fill up this whole area with lines. Okay? And then I'm going to just go in and put some straight lines in each section. Put whatever kind of lines you want. Okay? So I'm putting two diagonal lines. They're straight, but they move towards the corner or they point towards the corner. So those are the lines that I'm putting in there. Because when we add all of these lines, we create texture, right? Okay, now inside this wing right here, I'm going to use a different color. I think I'm going to use purple. And I'm going to do some more of the same kind of lines I just did. Just filling them in. And then maybe I'll use another color to just add some extra little lines there. Okay, you see how I did that? Then I'm going to draw some straight lines and some diagonal lines. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to now pick another color. Uh, let's see. Do I want to use that color? Yeah, I'll use that that red orange color. And I'm going to draw some more lines here on the back. I'm just going to fill that in just like that. And you'll notice your colors might mix a little bit. That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to take this red orange and I'm going to color in up in the front a little bit. And I'm going to color the top of the head, this part of the head, which is almost like a crown. Then we're going to take some yellow and color in the beak. And add some more curved lines up here in the front. Okay. Wow, I got a lot of lines on my chicken with the oil pastels. Oh, I see where I missed some of the lines here. So I'm just filling it in now. How is yours looking? I bet it's looking great. You all are such talented artists. So I'm just filling those in. Then I'm going to go up here and add some, just color a little bit. Just like this. Just like that. And then the last thing I'm going to do before we add our last layer of color, I think I'm going to put some straw down here around the bottom. So I'm going to grab my brown. I'm going to use brown and I'm going to use a little bit of orange, I think, and a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to color some scratchy lines because we're trying to create texture all around. Okay, then I'm gonna, on top of that, I'll put a little bit of the orange. This is the lighter orange because we also have that red orange. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on top of that, okay? Very good.
All right, again, if your picture looks very different from mine, that is perfectly fine because art is unique. It's very unique, okay? So we have all of our colors on our chicken. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna add a layer of color with our watercolor paint. We've used this before. Do you remember this, our watercolor set? So we're gonna use that to fill in some of the white areas of our chicken. Okay, so now we're going to get our watercolor paint set ready here. I am wetting my brush, my flat brush that I'm using. I'm putting it in the water so that I can get the paint nice and wet. So I got a little bit of water in there in the color I want to start with. And I'm just going to nicely or gently swish my brush around in the color. See how I'm doing that? So I'm going to start with the color blue. And then I'm just going to paint it right on top of each feather. And I'm going to wet my brush because I have to keep my brush wet. So I'm just going to put in a little water. And you'll notice that the color is going to fill in all of the white areas, but it will not cover up the oil pastel because the oil pastel pushes the color away. So it's called color resist. Okay. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue here and I'm going to also use a little bit of this blue up here, right on the neck where I said we made the little necklace. So we're just going to fill it in, get a little bit more and fill it in. Okay. I'm going to keep wetting my brush so I can keep my paint nice and wet. And then I'm just going to fill this in. Okay. So I'm using blue. I want you to use whatever color you want to use. Okay. So I'm going to rinse my brush now because I want to go now to a new color. I'm going to get some green now. I'm going to get some green here. And I'm just tapping my brush and swishing my brush around gently so I can get some color on there. So now I'm going to take the green. I'm going to color this part of the feathers. I'm going to get some more water on my brush and then go back into that green color. You see that? So I could put that color wherever I want it to be. So I think I'm going to take this um, green now and put it up here in the front. You see that? Oh, my chicken is becoming very colorful, even more colorful because I already used a lot of colors. I like it. So I'm going to keep filling in the white of the chicken. All right. Now I'm going to get some yellow. Let me get a little bit more water on my brush. And there's a little napkin there, a little paper towel here if you need to wipe your brush off. So I'm going to use that too. But every time I get a new color, I'm going to rinse my brush really well so I can make sure I keep the colors in their own little area. So I got some yellow now. And I'm going to use the yellow to paint in the body. The other part of the body. I'm just dragging the color, getting more water. Uh oh, be careful here. All right, filling it in. Okay. So I'm going to use. This yellow is a little light, so I'm going to hold up my picture so you can kind of see it. My lights are pretty bright, so it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange now to help paint in the body. Oh, that's kind of light too. It's okay. That's okay. I'll use yellow and orange to paint in. Yeah, that's a little bit better. The orange, the yellow rather, is a little bit better. So grab a little bit more yellow. And just keep painting in the body. Mm 
Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep filling this in. So I'm just moving all over the body. Just like that. Okay, good. I'm almost done. All right, so now I'm going to get a little bit of that red and fill in the head. And this red is kind of light. It's lighter than a regular red. So it looks a little bit more pink when you put your brush in it and you paint with it and that's okay I'm gonna I like that I'm gonna use it see it looks a little bit more pink okay. and that's okay I'm gonna use that see see the pink my lights are kind of bright there okay all right I'm gonna grab a little bit more red and I'm gonna keep painting in How's your painting going? I hope you're enjoying yourself. And then I'm also going to use the red to paint in the tail. And I'm just going to paint right on top of my, my lines that I drew with the oil pastels. And I keep going back to the water to make sure I keep my brush wet. I need to do that this paint is called watercolor paint and it is made so that you can really create nice soft tints and shades and so you have to keep it wet so that the paint is usable so we have to keep getting it wet we put our brush in the water then put it back in the paint and we'll put a little bit more pink or red here that looks pink. Put that in the head. Wow, I really like the way my hand came out. It's really bright and colorful. I like it a lot. All right. Okay. So I'm just going back over my yellow. I put a little orange in there too. Okay. It's my brush and get a little bit more yellow there. Very good. I like that a lot. All right. All right, we're going to need to let this dry. And what you're going to do is you want to rinse your brush out really, really good in the water. Just like that. And then wipe it on your paper towel. All right, let's just so, compare very quickly our artwork to the artwork of Pablo Picasso. And we'll also look at the artwork in the story, okay? All right, so I'm just going to move a few things around here. And here we go. Okay, so remember... How we looked at the difference between Picasso's two different paintings of one is of a rooster and one is of a hen and so now we can compare them to what we've done we have a lot of texture in our artwork just like Picasso does right isn't it beautiful the colors that we used just like the artist and then we also have a tail sticking out of our chicken, just like the two chickens on this painting. And then we're going to also, let's look at the book. Ooh, remember the beautiful chickens and hens in the book? We use a lot of lines and colors, just like the artist does, to create texture. Okay? So the artist in the story or illustrator for the story used lots of colors and lines to make texture. So did the artist Pablo Picasso. And so did we, because we are artists too. And do you notice that our chicken has an eye? So do uh, the paintings show eyes on the chickens? 
as well as in the story we see the eyes on the chickens or the hen. So I hope that you enjoyed this story and this art lesson. I enjoyed doing it with you. I had fun. I like how colorful our artwork is. And I look forward to when we get together and do more art. You all are so talented and so gifted and so creative. And it's always a pleasure to do art with you. And I look forward to working with you again. Have a great day. Okay? Bye.